Hello everyone, and welcome to our channel. Today we are going to talk about how to write an SOP. SOP stands for Standard Operating Procedure. There is not a specific way or regulation for SOP writing, but here we will provide a guidance on how to write Standard Operating Procedures or SOPs for the Food Safety Prerequisite Programs or other processes. This guidance is focused on learning about the elements or sections of a documented SOP and how to write them in order to ensure consistency in daily operations and produce safe and quality products. Okay, let's start. An SOP is a document that describes the how-to, the step-by-step, -step, the activities to complete tasks in accordance with the standards and regulations specific to each industry. An SOP can be a procedure, a policy, or a work instruction, or any document that describes a set of detailed instructions about how a process works. The benefits of an SOP are multiple but not limited to the following. The SOPs are the foundation of a food safety system and are the foundation to provide trainings and coaching, since they save time when describing the activities to employees. The SOPs make process consistent and provide detailed and specific information for the processes, which makes employees to perform their activities more efficiently and improves performance. The SOPs establish all the requirements for specific tasks. They also help to identify the control points and their limits. The SOPs keep employees accountable because there are documented expectations. SOPs reduce miscommunications and help with resolution of problems. The SOPs support during inspections and audits and ensure compliance with laws and regulations. Note that every business will not have identical SOPs. All SOPs are unique to their best practices. The following list of SOPs are required by most food safety systems, so if you don't have them documented, maybe it is time to start writing them out. The following SOPs are part of the prerequisite programs. Building design. Receiving, storage, and shipping. Equipment maintenance. Equipment calibration. Cleaning and sanitation for equipment and the facility. Water quality and supply. Process flow. Allergen programs. Product lot code identification. Chemical storage and usage. Pest control programs. Onboarding training for new employees. Frequency of retraining and verification. Mock recall procedures. Customer complaint procedures. Now let's start writing an SOP. And for that, we are going to go over each section of this template for better understanding. Note that this template is intended for demonstrative purposes only. The SOP must be formatted in a way that provides all information so that an employee can read and perform the functions of the task both safely and effectively. More elements can be added to the SOP format, or some can be removed as well, depending on the purpose of the document. In the first section we have the following. Company logo, you can choose to use the company name instead. Or you can just omit this section. Document number. This is part of the document control programs, which is a requirement for many food safety system schemes. You can use the nomenclature you prefer. If you don't have a document control program, it's okay. Hopefully you will grow to that point soon. SOP title. Use a name that is easy to remember and says what the procedure is about. Approval signature. The approval authority signs here. The department that implements the procedure will be the best fit to sign this field. Verification signature. This can be the person that oversees the food safety management system which will verify that the SOP complies with all the requirements, for example, the quality assurance manager. Next, we continue with the body of the SOP. Purpose. Here you can make reference to the regulations and standards that you want to comply with. What is the reason of the SOP? It is beneficial to have this element included in all SOPs. Scope. This section describes what the SOP is supposed to do and in what areas it will be implemented. Responsibilities. 
In this section goes who has the responsible for carrying out the tasks and the responsible for making sure of the implementation of the SOP. Tools or requirements. Here you can list what the employees need in order to be able to implement the SOP, such as personal protective equipment, buckets, spoons, or thermometers, among others. Procedure. This section is where all the tasks to perform will be listed. The most details you provide the better. Here is listed the step-by-step -step on how to implement the SOP, the monitoring activities and verification steps to ensure the SOP is implemented as you said it would be done, and the corrective actions if not implemented properly. The procedure describes how the SOP will be documented or monitored. If possible, make it visual. Add bullet points and images to catch the reader's attention and make it easy to digest. Use flowcharts, diagrams, or computer screenshots to help break up long sections of text and create a better user experience for the reader. Related documents. Here you will list the related supporting documents, such as forms and checklists, or other SOPs. For example, if this is a cleaning procedure, you can make reference to the approved chemicals list and to the cleaning verification checklist. Revision history. This section is where you keep track of all the changes made to the SOP over the time, and it will help to remember why the document was updated and when. Date. Here you enter the date that the SOP was revised. Description. Here you will briefly summarize the updates made. Signature. The person that made the update will need to sign in this field. Now the last section. Origin date. This would be the date that the document was first created. This date will never change when you make revisions to the SOP. Supersede date. Every time there is a new version of the SOP, the previous version date will be added here. The date in the version date will move to the supersede field. Version date. This will be the date that you make new revisions to the SOP. This is the most current revision to the document. All previous versions will need to be filed and take out from circulation. Review each SOP at least once a year to evaluate how well the SOP is working and make any updates if needed, such as new equipment, changes in processes, or new chemicals. SOPs can also be reviewed during internal audits when auditing the plant's programs and procedures as required by the Food Safety Management System. We hope that this have gave you an idea of what an SOP is and how to write one. That will be it for today. Thank you. And if you enjoyed our video, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel to check for the upcoming videos. We wish you the best of success.